Hi, hello everyone, it's JJ and I welcome you to this new video. Today we will talk about external SSD enclosures, but above all we will discuss the fastest enclosure with an incredible finish. I think you've never seen a product like this. Come on, let's talk about the Terra Master D1 SSD Plus, the fastest external SSD M2. Because today with one, the USB Type-C ports, even Thunderbolt 4, even Thunderbolt 5, and also the fastest M2 SSDs on the market, we can achieve speeds that are still quite crazy. Let's go. That's what we're going to see, because seeing products in photos is good, but seeing them in video is better. So unleash yourself and discover everything from 2 iTech or smartphone. The TerraMaster brand already offers us already. I said, I'm really happy to work with them because, well, I didn't have a brand like this and everything for external drives and all a bit fast, a bit special. And we'll see that I didn't choose the least good one. Let's start right away with the contents of the box. In the box, we'll have our case, which is fully aluminum. We'll see, that's quite important. A small pouch to be able to carry it with you. A USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable. Interestingly, when you look at the cable, it said that the maximum speeds go up to 80 gigabits. Wow. And the charging, because yes, it also needs to be changed at 240 watts. I mean, they definitely put our, what they had as the best. And we will also have a small screwdriver to be able to open the case. We'll see that. In our package, obviously, there was no SSD. We had to buy one, meaning it was optional. But that seems quite obvious. So we went with a 2280 SSD because it needs to fit. They advised us to take the Weston Digital Black SN850X. So uh, we thought we'd get a two terabyte one because, well, those are roughly the capacities I need for my videos. And we have up to 7,300 megabits with and without a heatsink. So we'll see. Given the use of the file, there's no need to add an extra heatsink. So we had to buy one. So we chose that one. Let's talk a bit about our case. It measures 112 by 80 by 33 millimeters. Okay, you saw the shape, it's a bit strange because yes, it is full aluminum, meaning it's a forged aluminum piece to, to, to be better, with a small space in the middle to put an SSD. The weight, of course, is 248 grams. So it's aluminum, it's actually, it's already, it's first and foremost a very beautiful piece of aluminum. Beyond also being a storage solution, on one side of our case, let's put it that way, we'll have a USB-C connector, 40 gigabits once again, so it's compatible with USB 4, 3, 2, 1, not 0, but well. And it is also compatible with Thunderbolt 5, 4, and 3. Once again, we have a compact format. Oh, there is only one port, so you can't make a mistake. It is compatible with M2 SSDs. There are two, so there are 22, 80, all the way up to 8 terabytes. 8 terabytes seemed a bit too much to me. I prefer to put 2 terabytes, etc. So if we look at the technical specifications provided to us, performance, there you go, ultra fast USB 4, speed reaching 3641 megabits, ideal for 4K, 8K video editing. So I mainly use it for storing my videos and files. That way, when I travel, I have a bit of everything. So it seems pretty good to me. Large data transfers maximum read, they indicate up to 3800 megabytes and write up to 3700. That seems pretty good. Let's go. We open our case with the little screw on the side. No, it's not very complicated. So what's nice is that the screw is fixed in place. This means it can't fall out on its own. That will prevent losing it. That's kind of my specialty too. We open it and we realize we really have a big piece of aluminum. It's truly incredible. And when we open it inside, we really see our slot for putting our M2 SSD with the locking screw. We would have liked some on the side as well. We have a small thermal paste. There you go, it doesn't hurt to add a bit more of that, especially for the contact of the SSD on the aluminum. And it tells us that our case also offers protection and security. We have additional protective components to ensure stable data transmission by safeguarding against short circuits, surges, etc, etc. While you put in your SSD, you don't need to be a rocket scientist because you place your SSD on one side, you remove the list, then you put it back to lock it. As for us, we removed the sticker from the thermal paste and placed it on. So be careful, it's true that you really need to be cautious when closing it, as it's truly a large piece of aluminum that closes very precisely. Okay, you really have to close it properly. I thought we just had to close it, and by pushing it a bit hard, it would close. No, no, it's better to really close it, press down well so that the paste makes contact, and the aluminum fits where it should, and then tighten a little with the small screw. Well, it's not very complicated, but we realize that we have a beautiful forged piece. Okay, let's go, we'll see what it looks like. Do we plug it in directly? So I will plug it in first on my Mac Mini. No. Uh, it's my MacBook Air M2. So I don't know if you're like me and know nothing about the USB Type-C plug. 
Once it's USB Type-C, then it's USB Type-C again. Yes, but it's Thunderbolt 3, 4, 5, so it goes faster because of something. It's a bit like HDMI. They all have the same shape, but they don't all have the same speed. So I'm plugging it into my MacBook Air with the M2 processor. There are two ports at the same time. There are no stickers, no little lightning symbols, stuff like that. I plug in the first one and run my benchmark to see how it goes. Well, on the MacBook Air M2, it's not too bad. 2,600 in writing. No, 2,600 in writing and 3,000 in reading. So we say to ourselves, we're almost reaching the maximum. What had the manufacturer told us? Well, 2,600, 3,000, that already seemed pretty decent. Of course, some might find this case a bit bulky compared to other cases on the market that you can find in Thunderbolt 4 and all. I have one, I can assure you. So the problem is the faster you write, the more it will heat up the memory and the more cooling will be needed. Generally, on other external drives with Thunderbolt 4 or 5, well, there's a big fan inside and this one makes an incredible noise, meaning when I use it, even sometimes when I connect my TV, it's still audible. It's horrible. It's the same when I attach it to the computer. You only hear that. You hear it more than the computer and everything. It's horrible. The advantage of having one piece cast like this in aluminum is that, as you understand, all the cooling is done via the aluminum's dissipation. The best conductor, all that, all that. It is well studied. It is well ergonomic. So then you might ask me, does the case heat up? Of course, especially when you do benchmarks like this by sending a lot of read and write transfers for, uh, for three or four minutes. So obviously it will start to heat up, but we will realize that yes, it is hot, but of course it is extremely silent and the heat sink does its job well. After Viv, avoid placing it in a location. Well, you put it somewhere that's a bit ventilated. You place it like that and you realize it's very silent and we almost reach the maximum speed we can expect with this kind of case, this kind of memory. So you're going to ask me, yes, but who is this kind of case made for? Well, they indicate, for example, for all those who have Apple products and find that Apple memory is worth the price of gold and it's extremely expensive, but they still need some speed. Like me, for example, I like to do my editing on Final Cut or things like that on an external drive. So when I change machines, I can have them. Plus, it acts as a backup for me. You can partition the drive to do a backup and possibly your backups, your videos and everything. And, and when you're using Final Cut, well, to access in real time, you need a read and write speed that is quite impressive. So they also point that out to us. I hadn't thought about that. They tell us that they have a software which is free called the TDAS application. So it's simply a small software that you can install on your phone, either Android or iOS, which will allow you to make backups. Who has never crashed, broken a phone saying, oh dear, I didn't back up the cloud. Well, there you go. It costs a fortune. And who hasn't backed up saying, oh dear, I should have backed up my photos. I'm going to back up my documents and everything. Know that with a drive like this and a USB Type-C cable, since generally now even iPhones are USB Type-C and even all phones now are USB Type-C. Well, then you, can, then you can set up an automatic backup on your computer. For example, I use Time Machine on Mac. It's great. I always have a drive just for Time Machine to have a backup every day, just in case. We're never safe. Well, you can also do it with Windows. You can decide to either use it only for my backups or partition the drive in two. One part is to put a little bit of my life, things like that. And another part is for the backup. I could very well share one terabyte for me and one terabyte for the backups. So I thought I would try with my Mac Mini M4, as I could see everywhere from the specialist, but it's all the same ports. Well, it doesn't have any interest. Listen, when I looked on the internet, they clearly say that the ports at the front are USB type C ports and the ports at the back are USB type C Thunderbolt 4 ports. So there is indeed a difference. And that's what we see when we connect, because when we connect the front ports, as in all the TerraMaster photos, in terms of writing, we are at 900 for writing and 900 for reading. Not great. Well, it's good anyway. There are quite a lot of 900 and 900 with the port at the front, and you think it's not bad. But at the back, the three ports at the back are much more, well, they're the same, but they go much faster since they're Thunderbolt. So I took the middle one because they say there's this urban legend that says the middle one has a little lightning, so it's faster than the others. No, it's apparently all three. And they're my good friend. When we connect our external drive at the back and do a little test, we reach 2,750 once again in writing and 3,100 in reading, which is a bit more than our MacBook Air M2. Well, after that, it's a small difference. We were at 2,006. Now we are at 2,750. We were at 3,000 in reading. Now we are at 3,100. Well, it's, it's good. It's even better than good, but we're really reaching speeds that are astronomical. But I find the speeds are still quite interesting because because yes, you've already understood it's plug and play. You plug it directly into your computer and everything. Well, apart from formatting the SSD, you'll be able to easily change the SSD. 
since there will be no fan, no gadget, no thing, it does things. I already have another case like that, which worked perfectly. And then overnight from everything being great, doing lots of things, it did absolutely nothing. So I took the SSD and put it in another case. There you go. Well, that's kind of the point and all. There you go. So M2 SSD, you can find them at all market prices, at all speeds. We chose Western Digital Black because apparently, well, it seems to be good, but apparently it also works with Samsung. I thought I had an 890. I saw that there was a 990. There's even a 990 Pro. Well, you'll go on with your life and all. Well, we still reach a speed. Let's say that 3,000 in reading and 3,000 in writing would be more than enough to make me happy. And well, it does it pretty well. Plus, uh, as you saw, it's ultra silent. You can place it next to your Mac or anything else. It's quite a nice piece, uh, a bit design and all in aluminum like this. It's easy to connect, easy to install. There's only one plug. Inside, you can just put the SSD with a screw. Well, no need to have been careless. So I saw in their argument that they also stated that the unibody design, entirely metal or aluminum, ensures durability and stable long-term operation which almost makes you forget the device in any environment. It makes no noise, it is discreet, it is plugged in, and it allows you to expand your memory from 512 to eight terabytes. It was exactly what he needed, and now I'm saying how much? How much for the aluminum piece that puts an SSD inside using USB Thunderbolt 4 or 5? No, that was maybe a bit long there and all, come on. If we look directly like this on the official site, it's 119 euros 99. I don't find it excessively expensive. If I have a promo code, I'll definitely put it in the description. Well, once again, this is really an investment you're going to make for a long time. The part is fine, Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 5. I don't even have a Thunderbolt 5 device because for Thunderbolt 5, you need to have a Mac Mini M4 Pro, I think, or wait for the new ones. So there you go. It will, of course, be available on Amazon as well. I will put the link in the description. I'll also include the link for the SSD I have, well, the M2, because an SSD, well, listen, on the brand sheet, it says SSD M2, you know. It might be just M2 because it's over there. Once again, I'll put the link in the description. If anyone wants to buy the same one in black and everything, to have the same speeds and everything, there you go. Let me know in the comments what you think about this case a little bit. Do you prefer something all in disgusting plastic with a fan that makes a crazy noise? It's true that when I say it like that, it's not appealing or a magnificent piece in forged aluminum, super strong. And well, then you can drive over it with a car. Who is, that will last a really long time, has all the speeds, is easy to connect and all. There you go. No, I know I'm pitching it to you really badly. Come on, as always, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Don't forget to leave a little comment with Terramaster. And as your mother would say, you don't miss a thing. So don't forget to click over there on my logo and to click subscribe. And especially to click on the bell to receive all notifications so you don't miss my next videos. Because yes, it might be the beginning of an adventure and a love story between me and Terramaster. Because they were supposed to send me another one, that didn't happen. We got this one, but we're not safe from... Ne there you go. Don't hesitate to express your satisfaction directly in the comments by saying we want more Terramaster products. It helps to highlight Terramaster, participate in the giveaway, and maybe motivate them to send me other products. All right, thank you for visiting me. It's a pleasure. Have a great day, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your projects. Keep your spirits up. And above all, stay open-minded. As for me, I really like you. See you in a few days. Bye-bye.